Welcome back to NCC Sports Live. Eva Zacharia here alongside Jake Donnelly, and we're discussing whether or not Gino Ariema would be able to successfully make the switch from the women's team to the men's team at UConn. And I think that it would be a serious challenge for Coach Ariema and that he wouldn't be able to do it. But, Jake, you feel otherwise. Oh, yeah, I absolutely feel otherwise. And the reason that I feel otherwise is that the biggest thing that people are going to say is that Oriyama, he's been coaching the women's game all of these years. He's not going to be able to understand how to go from coaching women to coaching men. But there's one problem with that. Oriyama doesn't coach women. He coaches ball players. He coached Rebecca Lobo. He coached Kara Walters. Right now, he has two of the best players in all of college basketball on the same team. He has Tina Charles and he has Maya Moore. He coaches ball players and he's going to be able to make a very quick transition if UConn does decide to go from the great coach Jim Calhoun to maybe an even greater coach in Gino Oriema. And I think that there's going to be absolutely no problem with him going from the women's game to the men's game. And Jake, you mentioned all of the great players that Coach Oriema has for the women, but that's because as a women's coach, he has the ability to go out and recruit these players. He's had the top team in the nation for so many years in a row, an amazing winning streak for these guys. But if you switch him over to the men's team, the men's side of things, you have teams like UNC, Duke, even in the Big East alone, you have teams, Syracuse, Georgetown, Villanova, teams that other players are going to want to go to. So you have your 18-year-olds coming out of high school with dollar signs in their eyes. They're not going to be looking to play for a guy that coached women because of all the other Division I programs that are strong enough for them to go to. But he's done the impossible. He has actually made it an important game in Connecticut. If you go to Connecticut, people, they flock to the games. Nowhere else in America do people actually go to the women's game. I know it's a travesty because the women's game is sometimes more technically sound than it is on the men's side, but people in Connecticut, they love the UConn women. And there's a reason for it. The women, they come out to play. And Coach Oriyama is the reason they do. And he sends players to the WNBA. I know a lot of people are going to laugh, like, ooh, the WNBA. But these are the best players in the country. He has two, count them, two 70 win streaks where over the course of 70 games no one has gone to beat in them. UCLA's 88 game win streak that's gone. No one is going to touch the Huskies this year and the biggest thing that you mentioned with the players not going to be able to go because Oriyama won't be able to recruit. Well I'm sorry but that's just wrong. Oriyama has six national championships. He leads the nation among active coaches in all sports in within eight a uh, 862 winning percentage. The man before this season, that was before the season that he had that winning percentage streak. And if my memory serves me correctly, it's, uh, oh yeah, 31 and 0 this year for the women's Huskies. He's going to be able to do everything he does on the women's side just as well on the men's. Well, Jake, you know, all of these stats that you bring in are great. The 862 winning percentage is great, but it goes back to once again, that is the women's side of things. What has Gino Ariema proven as a men's basketball coach? Nothing. They're two different games. They are two physically different games. The skill levels are completely different. A women's team is way more skills-based, way less finesse-based than the men's teams. And most of the time, the men are coming in looking to go pro. And as you said with UConn, a lot of those ladies do end up in the WNBA, but it's a different team dynamic. There's way less pressure on them to win. They win by 30 or 40 points a game. So if they were ever to get in a close game, how would Gino Ariema react? We have no idea. You want to know how he'd react? The same way that Jim Calhoun just reacted over the weekend, by taking his players out. Because you know what? Right now, if I'm a UConn fan and I've seen what the men can do or can't do for that matter, 17 and 14 right now, folks. The UConn men, 17 and 14, just lost to South Florida, just lost to Notre Dame without Luke Heron Goatee. You know what? Right now, Jerome Dyson, you're sitting on the bench. And you know what? I don't want Darnell Smith. I don't want Jamal Coombs McDaniels. I'd rather have Maya Moore out there. UConn, they, are, they cannot do a single thing right. I want more finesse. I really do want more finesse. They are the most, one of the most turnover-prone teams. They are 252nd in the nation in turnovers. So you know what? I want that finesse, Eva. All right, Jake, you make some great points, and we will continue arguing this point when NCC Sports Live returns. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back to NCC Sports Live. Jake and I here discussing whether or not Gino Ariemo would be able to take over the men's basketball program at UConn. And before we went to break, Jake, you were talking about how this program, the women's program, is so prestigious and how everybody in Connecticut just loves this women's basketball team. But what I have to say to that is if you're going to switch Gino Ariema over to the men's side, what is that going to look like for the city of stores to the rest of America? Uh, well, one thing I'm just going to have to point out, town of stores, very farm agricultural, but town of stores, very close. I'm sure you've never been. But uh, <laughs> how's it going to look? It's going to look fine. You know why? Because Gino Oriem, as I said before, he doesn't coach the women. He coaches the ball players. And the biggest point that people forget about Connecticut is that the last sports team they had was back in 1997 with the Hartford Whalers. You know what? If you come to UConn, if you come to Connecticut, two stores to play basketball, you you are the only professionals in that entire state. In the Nutmeg State, they love their sports. And you know what? With Maya Moore and all that, Jim Calhoun, uh, people are asking, it's like, all right, you've got Jim Calhoun. He's going down. Maybe he's got all those scares with cancer. Is Gino, is he going to step in? What's it going to look like? We know what? The transition's going to be fine. Gino is one of the most scathing coaches out there. Jim Calhoun, kind of the same ilk. And you know what, Jim Calhoun? You mess up, boom, you're taken out of the game. Gino, he is just, he's a furious coach if you watch him. He's got the biggest ego. He's going to be able to deal with all the egos on the men's team. Not a problem at all. Uh, Katie Ferris, the only freshman on this team this year for the UConn women, right? She's a role player. She plays great defense, gets about 13 minutes a game. All of a sudden, though, in the middle of the season, she starts playing out of herself, starts playing too quick. So what does Gino do? He takes her aside. He says, Katie, look, just play within yourself. You're going to get your minutes. So what does he do in the next game? He doesn't play her at all, at all, folks. Not a single minute on the court. And he asked her after the game, how do you like that? She didn't like that well at all. So now she's playing within herself and she's found herself on the court. And you know what? This is going to work. It's going to carry over to the men's game. He's got the biggest ego in Connecticut. It suffocates people even in the North Central. So you know what? That ego, that coach, it's going to be the same thing over on the men's side. Jake, I still have to disagree with you if you think about it. Look at this UConn program. Jim Calhoun, a Hall of Fame coach, is their head coach right now. And if you take him out of the picture, people in stores are going to expect this team to win right away. And I just don't think that Gino Ariema will be able to come in and have that quick turnaround. And like I said earlier, it all goes back to the recruiting. High schoolers that want to make a lot of money and get to the NBA and leave college early are not going to come and play for a guy that coached a women's team no matter how successful he was, no matter how many wins he was, because no matter how you look at it, it is still a different game, Jake. But he did the almost impossible. He made the women's game the most popular sport. Right now, no one, and I mean no one, they cannot take the men right now. It's painful. I have an older brother, graduated UConn about 10 years ago, absolutely one of the biggest fans out there. After the Notre Dame game, Notre Dame, this is before the South Florida loss, he says, I can't stand to watch this team anymore. I don't want to watch Jerome Dyson. He's rather watching the women. Well, Jake, you make some great points, and it remains to be seen whether or not Gino Ariema actually will take over. That'll do it for us on NCC Sports Live. For Jake Donnelly, I'm Eva Zacharia. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.